Oh, we good. Okay. Good evening and welcome to our Facebook Live broadcast and the conference call members of the fellowship. Appreciate you all uh, being here tonight on the parking lot. If you want to see the Facebook or through the conference call, please uh, share this uh, with your uh, Facebook friends as well as your viewing on tonight. Of course, we begin with prayer. The Bible says, My house shall be called a house of prayer. So we always begin out of prayer, not out of tradition. But just the fact that God said that we should pray and that we should always to pray. So since we should always pray, we always try to remain in the attitude of prayer and make sure that we begin worship here um, with prayer. So the first prayer we will pray tonight is for the for and against the coronavirus disease, coming against it and attacking it in the spirit. But why is it necessary? It's necessary to do that. Uh, because we are victorious in every situation and we have to command the disease to go to its rightful place, which is for it to be destroyed. I'm not trying to be deep or anything on tonight, but in the spirit realm, we have to fight and make sure that it remains in check so it just does not just do what it wants to do. So I would ask you to repeat these prayers after me, if you will, please, on tonight. these prayers after me. Amen. Glory to God. And the prayer says, Thank you, Holy Father, Thank you, Holy Father for your mighty power, for your mighty power that, is that is able to heal all sickness and disease. We bless your holy name, Jehovah. For you are our God who heals us. Heavenly Father, let the blood of Jesus Christ be transfused into our blood vessels. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command every agent of coronavirus disease in animals, on humans, in the air, on surfaces to die. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood of humankind reject every evil foreign germ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, speak deliverance and healing into our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse this world of COVID-19 disease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we hold the blood of Jesus Christ against coronavirus. You must dry up. Now, now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. O oh Lord, oh Lord, let your healing hand, your healing hand be, stretched be stretched out upon the lives of those infected of with COVID-19 COVID disease. COVID in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, oh Lord, let your miracle hand, your miracle hand be, stretched be stretched out upon the lives of those COVID-19 disease now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, let your deliverance hand be stretched out upon the bodies of those who are carrying the germ of COVID-19 disease now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We reject every encounter with the spirit of death. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We reject every encounter with the spirit of death. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We reject every encounter with the spirit of death. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke every region in this world that harbors coronavirus disease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We destroy the grip and operation of coronavirus disease on our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every demon destined for hell attached to our family name and every spirit behind the name. Hear the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. 
every knee must bow. Therefore, we command you, spirits of glaucoma, migraine, headaches, brain tumor, tinnitus, arthritis, sugar diabetes, spinal stenosis, schematic nerve disease, lymphedema, hypertension, heart disease, emphysema, higher hernia, sinusitis, pneumonia, respiratory issues, kidney issues, obesity, digestive issues, acid reflux, frozen shoulder, gout, vertigo, fibroid tumor, cancers, paralysis, and especially COVID-19 disease in our lives, in our family's lives, to bow now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let the whirlwind of God scatter every vessel of infirmity fashion against our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let every germ of infirmity in our bodies die now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let every agent of sickness working against our health disappear. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every eternal disorder, receive order, dry up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, O Lord, let the blood of Jesus Christ flush out every evil deposit from our blood, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let the fire revival fall upon the United States of America. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, arise and give us God-fearing leaders. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the power of peace and progress overshadow this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your divine presence in our lives. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We will pray next prayers for abundance because even though you may not be working right now, God still has plenty. And it's nothing for him to get to you what you need or what you have desire of. His hands are not tied, neither is his arm short, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot say or that he cannot hear. And I want to encourage you to commit your financial care into God's hands as well. So we will pray these prayers and ask you to repeat these prayers after me as well. Well, please say, Oh, Spirit of God, humble all our finances and speak light and life to them. Oh, God, and graft us into your tree of abundance. Oh, God, cause your face to shine brightly upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, plant us, us in our financial needs. Oh Lord, cause all our allies to find us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, creator of heaven and earth, reveal to us the hidden treasures that you have for us and bring us to them. Wisdom of heaven. Come to us for our finances. Every good financial seed that we have planted, lying dormant in the soil, water find you, light find you, and sprout and bring forth abundant fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a wisdom of Solomon, come to us for finances. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Money and favor. Find us now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord. Guide us to our financial will. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh God, oh God, who sees, sees. cause the waters of abundance, of abundance to flow to us in our, our household. O Lord, o Lord let, the let the anointing of Joseph find us, find us in, our in our lives. We are tithers and givers. Tithers and givers. Therefore, Therefore, windows of heaven, windows of heaven. Be, open be open and pour out all our blessings to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us find the palm tree in every desert, in our finances, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every wall of Jericho, in our finances, collapse now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, bless us in the land of our affliction with abundance. Let the creative of ideas that you give us make us rich and further the kingdom of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Liberality and generosity are our portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, greatly encouraged by your participation and your viewing on tonight or your listening on tonight. Once again, we encourage you to share. Why you ask us to share is not for popularity. And so that the word of God gets and reaches as many people as possible. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on tonight that will encourage you and enlighten you and inspire you in the things of God. Amen. Amen. And how shall we hear? Without a preacher, amen. And there's a preacher on, in the building on tonight, anointed of God, amen, for this very moment, left here for this very moment to speak life, health, healing, and wholeness, and prosperity into all our lives, amen. 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 So we're going to present him, amen, at this time, amen. Glory to God. Thank you again for your participation. Do it right quick for me. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Now look at somebody else and tell them one more time, neighbor. Neighbor. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Join me and welcome my visionary, our prophet, our founder, my daddy, Dr. Ruben I. Sampson Sr. Amen. 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 His name is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus, every knee yes, Lord. shall bow, every tongue confess. Yes, yes. One pastor says every knee should bow. Hmm. And the next pastor says every knee shall bow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I greet you this evening in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who causes us to triumph in every situation is our God and through him we do valiantly. This is the day the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I am glad in it. How about you? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Today is a good day. Amen. Every day, Every day is a good day when you know the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I learned that from John Hill Westbrook when he went to be with the Lord. 36 years old, he passed the Antioch Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. He played football for Baylor. And he ran for Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> but what a preacher he was. Amen. But he would always say, every day, every day. is a good day yes. when you know the Lord. Thank you, Lord. It inspired me, and I have grown from it since. Amen. Amen. That it's a blessing to know that in spite of what's going on, it's a good day. Why is it a good day? Yes, sir. It's a good day because it's a day that the Lord has kept us. Yes, thank it's you. a day that the Lord has blessed us. Yes. It's a day that the Lord did not leave us alone. Thank thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you uh, who are listening tonight. Uh, we're Facebook Live on video conference. I want to especially thank the members of our church who are so faithful in the things of God. Amen. Who have been so faithful to this ministry and in this ministry. Yes. Amen. I want to thank you for being on the parking lot this evening. Amen. 
really encourages me, amen, that our cars are not the only automobiles on the parking lot. Amen. Amen. And that you are there in support. And here because we love the Lord. Amen. 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 So I want to thank you for that. And in that light, I'm going to do my best not to keep you on the parking lot or on the video too long tonight. Amen. Pray my strength. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to, as the old preacher say, draw your attention to the Bible. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter number 5, verses 16 through 24 is the basis for our lesson navigating difficulty well. But I believe tonight may be the last installment on quench not the spirit. Amen. Verse 19, it says, quench not the spirit. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Holy Father, for your people. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, our teacher. You taught us in your word that when we continue in your word, we show ourselves to be your disciples indeed, and that we will know the truth, and that truth that we know will make us free. So we thank you right now for the freedom we receive from your word. Thank you, Father, that your anointing is upon your word. Your word falls on anointed ears, and we hear so as to receive. I pray for every person tonight who listens. I pray, Holy Father, they listen with an open heart. I pray, Holy Father, you grant us all revelation of your word tonight. Ask you, Holy Father, pervade our spirit and let your will be done, not ours. Less of us, O oh Holy Father, Less of us and more of you. Less of us, O oh Holy Father, until there's none of us and all of you. Not unto us, but unto your name. Give glory, majesty, dominion, and power is our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Quench not the spirit. Again, as far as I know, this may be our last installment on quench not the the spirit. As I've said each time, this being the fourth lesson of this subject, this is a little text, but it's a full text. It's a small text, yet to me it's a wonderful text because it's full of wonder that anyone should cause it to happen. It's a short text, yet personally it's a dreadful text to me. It's dreadful to me that I have the power to put out the fire of the Holy Ghost. It troubles me that somewhere on the inside of me there lies a baseness that's able to put out the fire of the Holy Ghost, that I can put out a fire that I didn't start. Again, to quench the spirit does not mean to resist, does not mean to Resist the spirit. It doesn't mean to dampen the spirit or smother the spirit. It means to com put it completely out. And we've talked about who the spirit is. It's the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. We've talked about what he does, who he is, how we can quench the spirit, why we shouldn't quench the spirit, what happens when we quench the spirit. Tonight, I want to talk about how to avoid quenching the spirit. Amen. The object of this exhortation, quench not the spirit, it applies to the es not the essence of the spirit, but his agency, the fire. Hallelujah. The agency of the Holy Ghost is symbolized by fire. But John said, I baptize you with water, but John Baptist I'm talking about, he said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the first thing I want to say tonight to avoid quenching the spirit, let the fire burn. Let him burn. Fire brings light. And it's the office of the Holy Ghost to impart knowledge. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. The fire is used to purge metals of impurity. In like manner, the Holy Spirit purifies us from sin and 
and, and, and renders us able to receive holiness. And I want to say it that way because you're not holy on your own. Holiness is imputed to us by way of the Holy Ghost. And folks are going to brag about I'm holy. Yeah, but you're not holy on your own because all of our righteousness lumped together is still a filthy rag. Yes, and in us, in our flesh, dwells no good thing. Yes, and, and the Bible is clear. Let him that thinks he stands mm. take heed lest he fall. That we have no reason to brag about our holiness because just like the fire of the Holy Ghost, it didn't come from us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That holiness is imputed to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just as faith is given to us, you have to receive it. Amen. Amen. That, that, that just as fire, I say, purges metals of impurity, the Holy Ghost he purges us of impurity, making us holy. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, he was the spirit of burning. In the New Testament, he's the spirit of holiness. Hallelujah. That fire does not just give light. Fire imparts heat. Well, it's the office of the Holy Ghost to kindle in the emotions of our soul to animate and enliven love and zeal and joy in our soul, our mind, our will, our imaginations, our emotions, our intellect. The Holy Ghost gets in that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Working on our emotions, making us better. Yes. To make better choices and act better. Yes. To treat folk better. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord Jesus. So we need to, next to value the fire of the Holy Spirit. If you value the fire of the Holy Ghost, you won't put him out. His preciousness is beyond conception. Amen. How he's able to transform our state and transform our character and secure for us the blessings of eternity. Hallelujah. That's a blessing from God. Yes, Thank yes it is. Thank we ought to value the Holy Spirit for his agency who's able to make us more like Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then next, I want to encourage you to be a good steward of the Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Be a good steward of the Holy Ghost in you. He's not only a gift. He is a stewardship. Yes. He's not just a privilege. He's a possession. And he ought to be cherished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we ought to make more room for him. Yes. Hallelujah. In our spirit. To let God have his way. They used to say when I was a boy, let go and let God. What they meant was let go of your selfish tendencies. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let God have his perfect sway. What sway? That's, that's God's control. He's not going to control you arbitrarily. He has to be in right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then next, recognize his presence. He's here. He's everywhere. Recognize the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And, and many and many instances, he's on the sideline waving, hey, I can help y'all with that. Mm. Amen. Recognize his presence. Well, how do you know when he's that pastor? Well, you know, some folks they say, well, the spirit is high. And I've seen the power of God hit the building, and folks don't know what to do. They continue to try to go on with the program. Or hurry up, put the preacher up while the fire is hot. Listen, anytime the Holy Ghost shows up, he's there to bring a blessing. Yes. And you need to be still and see what he wants to do. Yes. Yes. It may not be time for preaching. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You ain't got to go on with a program because you've got one. Have a program and pray that the Holy Ghost preempt the program. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I want to encourage you to avoid taking credit for what only the Spirit of God can do. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't care how talented you are. You can't shout people. Mm. Amen. Amen. I tell you, see folks hollering, you don't know what they're hollering for. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me. Some of them hollering more for you to hurt and sit down. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm just being honest. I'm just, just telling the truth. Mm. Hallelujah. 
recognize this, but don't try to take credit for what God can do. You can't stir people up. <laughs> Amen. You don't have the power to excite people. Amen. Amen. Folk can excite themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then whatever you do, somebody get healed, don't you take credit for that. Oh, Lord. Amen. I, you know, one of the craziest things in the world to me is these folk who love to try to take credit for somebody receiving the Holy Ghost, getting filled with the Holy Ghost in that ministry. That ain't nothing about you. Amen. Who the snot do you think you are that you can get credit for somebody being filled with the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mean no harm this evening, but it, it bothers me when folk lie on God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, the Holy Ghost can be imported through laying on of hands, through oil, through prayer, but it ain't you doing it. Well, want to take credit for some celebrity getting filled with the Holy Ghost in that ministry. What the snot does that mean? That don't mean nothing. In our flesh, I want to say it again, in our flesh dwells no good thing. And the more we remember that, the better off we're going to be and know that we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then next, avoid being tempted. To disbelieve in the existence of his divine work. And I know for some of you that's hard. For some of you that's hard because you heard that 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 that, 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 that speaking in tongues, that's the emotional gift. Now the Bible calls it a spiritual gift. And how in the snot can you get emotional gift out of spiritual gift? Amen. If the Bible calls it a spiritual gift, that's what it is. It's not an emotional gift. You think that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you got to get emotional? My Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. You don't get emotional to speak in English? Mm -hmm. Unless you're using some emphasis. Amen. You mad at somebody? My Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. Lord. Tons of the spiritual language. And if you can't speak it, it don't mean it don't exist. It's in the Bible, so why you want to argue with the Bible and disprove what the Bible says? If, you th if you're going to throw out Holy Ghost, you got to throw out salvation. Oh, no. oh, no. Because it's the Holy Ghost who saves us, and it's Jesus who fills us with the Holy Ghost. Read the Bible. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read it to be wise. Practice it to be holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then separate yourself from the world. That's how you Avoid quenching the spirit. Separate yourself from the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The great design of the Christian vocation is holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the one purpose of the operation of the divine spirit himself. Is to help us stay away from the world. See, when a Christian allows himself and permits himself to be so caught up with earthly things, to conceal his character. You understand what I'm talking about? Hey Amen. When you, you, you go where you ought not go. Mm -hmm. We call it incognito. Mm -hmm. Trying not to look like a Christian. Mm -hmm. Put on your dark glasses. And go somewhere you ought not go. And somebody's going to recognize you anyhow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Because old folk, they would like to say the mark is on you, child of God. Mm -hmm. Mark ain't just on preachers. Mark is on Christians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can't touch your life and you look the same. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord Jesus. If you allow the affections of the earth and, and practice secular vocations that are forbidden, you pursue those things that are legal but inordinate. You know, all things lawful are not expedient. Just because it's legal don't mean you ought to get yourself involved with it. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. If you do that, you know your light don't go out. Mm. And you, you be searching for it, and you won't be there. Mm. To avoid quenching the Holy Spirit, let the Spirit of God give us light on the Holy Scripture. See, the Spirit of God can give us light in the church. That's the pillar and ground of the truth. The loving Spirit of God is longing to work among us. His heart is set upon us. He's opening his treasures of goodness unto us. 
Hallelujah. And he wants to work in the midst of a cold, worldly, unbelieving heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I say again, let the Spirit of God give you light on the Scripture. You know, it, it's good to read. And I read, I read commentary, sure do. Read books written by men on the Bible. But that's for my personal edification. It ain't for preaching. It's not for preaching. When I want to hear from God, I have to listen to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then next I want to say, cultivate mutual forbearance and love. That's something that's kind of missing in the church. I, I remember the time, man, when, when, when folk had a lot of love. They ain't do much hugging. They ain't do much hugging. I remember the time a man wouldn't make a man in public. No, 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 no. And privately he done. That just wasn't done. And that was a time when, when folk didn't do much hugging, but they had no love. Mm. Now we got a lot of hugging and less love. Oh, Something's wrong with this picture. The fruit of the Holy Ghost is love. How is it that folk can just mistreat one another? How can you cast folk off? Oh, Spirit of God taught me years ago. He said, son, care more about people than you care about what they do for you. Because the time will come, they may not be able to do it anymore. And if your love for them is based upon what they do, then your love will wane and grow cold. Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yes. Mutual forbearance and love has to be cultivated. Putting up with one another. Goes now on that same note, I'm going to say if you want to be petted, you need to be pet of all. Right. Amen. If you, you want to be petted by folk, you need to be pet of all. Amen. You, you need to stop being so devil's contrary. Help me, Lord Jesus. Man, listen, I made up my mind. I had a, I had a serious spell of sickness here several years ago, and I made up my mind right then. When I was 62 years old, I said, I'm not going to, whatever my wife wants me to do, I'm going to do it. Whatever my children want me to do, I'm going to do it. Whatever they don't want me to do, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to grow old and contrary. Help me, Lord Jesus. Because, you know, but ain't nothing to me more aggravating than trying to help somebody that's contrary. Yes. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yes. I mean, the least thing you can do. You know, when folk want to say, can I help you? Yes, not. I praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I don't turn down no help. I tell folk that to me. I don't turn down no help. Folk don't have to be kind to me, and I know they don't have to choose me to be kind too. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yes. And if folk, you know, somebody trying to help you, them, I got it. And you stump. Come on, I got it. You ain't got nothing. But old age, Amen. you ought to be sweet. Yes. Yeah, man. That indulges, amen, and angry passions, that's incompatible. We need to be more tolerant with one another. Amen. Have mercy on one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 30 through 32, it said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Watch this. It said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed under the day of redemption. Well, how are we going to avoid grieving the Holy Spirit? Here we go, verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Now, beloved, man, we got to get rid of these sex. I, ain't, I say S-E-C-T-S, schisms, yeah. cliques, all that same thing. That we're brothers and sisters. Look yes. at what church you belong to. We're brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 Never saw the like before of Christians acting silly with one another. Mm. You speak to them and they grunt. All that kind of, what the devil is that? If you're going to avoid quenching the spirit, we've got to create mutual forbearance and love. Love one another. Hallelujah. Make the decision. Get I love I got enough love for me and you. Hallelujah. 
Stop neglecting the word of God in prayer. Hallelujah. I, I want to say something to you this evening. The quickest way to burn out in ministry is trying to operate in the flesh. Help me, Lord Jesus. That when you let the Spirit lead you, hallelujah, hallelujah. when you let the Spirit lead you, you're not going to burn out. That priest don't know what he's talking about. Yes, I do know what I'm talking about. Here's, 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 here's the thing. How is it that you can walk in the Spirit and burn out and he's the fire that keeps you going? I'll wait. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Don't neglect the word of God in prayer. Hallelujah. But I got to close. I said I'm going to let you go this evening. See, Emmanuel, that's God with us. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost, <laughs> that's God in us. I say from time to time, I'm packing a conquering spirit. Because greater is he, the Holy Ghost, who's in me than he that is in the world. Because until the Holy Ghost comes, so he comes in, we'll ruin people. Oh, but thank the Lord Jesus that when he does come in us, yes, the ruin becomes a living temple. Yes. Thank, you, Lord Jesus. thank you, Lord Jesus. No man can explain that. And it ain't for explanation. It's not for understanding. It's for believing. But when you believe it and walk in it, that's when you'll understand it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My testimony I remember years ago. Hallelujah. Years ago, as a young pastor, I, I, I knew there had to be a better church than I was pastor. I knew there had to be a better pastor than I was. I knew there had to be a better sermon than I was preaching. I knew there had to be more to the Bible than I was teaching. I, I knew that there was something wrong somewhere and I couldn't put my finger on it. Mm. But then I sought the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Like they taught me when I was a child. I cried and I cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I cried until I got in touch with him. Yes, sir. I prayed and I prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until I heard from him. Yes, sir. My soul could not be contented. Mm. My spirit could not be contented. Yes. Because I understood that there was something else that I needed to be doing other than what I was doing. Oh, that I didn't seem to have who I needed mm. in my ministry. And I want to say to you today, let him in today. Yes, yes. Let him in today. And let him in to stay. Yes. Oh, yes. Open up your heart and let him in. Somebody knocking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it must be Jesus. Yeah. Somebody knocking, and it must be Jesus. Why don't you let him in today? And let him in to stay. Hallelujah. When he comes in, he can change your life. When he comes in, he can change your wild career. When he comes in, he makes everything work out all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. God keep you is my prayer. Yes. Quench not. Quench not the fire. Yes. Quench not the spirit of God. He's not far from either one of us. He is not heaven, he cannot hear his arm, not sure that he cannot save you. Somebody out there listening to me tonight. And you've been wondering what's missing. You pray and sometimes you don't feel nothing. I, I want to tell you something, praying ain't by feeling. <laughs> 
that ain't what it's about. He's already promised he's not going to leave you. So he's that even if you can't feel it. Hallelujah. Praying is about talking to God and then hush and listen to him. He knows how to straighten out everything. The Holy Spirit of God within you will tell you exactly what you need to do about every situation. And I'm going to pray tonight. I want to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost in his fullness. Hallelujah. Jesus says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's who the Holy Ghost is for. He's for empowering us to be a witness. I'm going to tell you, time is winding down, children. Yes. And more than ever, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ needs the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it ain't so because I said so. It's so because the Holy Ghost says so. Our Father and our God, thank you. Thank you for these that I'm praying for. I pray, Holy Father, that you do for them what you've done for so many. Reach into that believer. Touch their hearts. They may believe your word is true. Yes, Lord. Yes. And breathe on them. Yes. Have you breathed on so many? Your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you. Your promise said that you would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Now I want to pray again. I want to pray for you who may be listening to me and you have pain in your body. I want to tell you something. There's no distance in the spirit. And I'm praying for you not so that you can hear me because you don't have to hear me for me to pray for you. But God has to hear. But this evening, I want to pray that your body be healed. If you're experiencing pain that's not the will of God if you've been diagnosed with some terrible disease that is not the will of God you may be thinking about something wrong that you've done but that's not how God responds to sin Thank you. Thank you. he responds to sin by washing us and making us clean when we call out to him in repentance yes. hallelujah. hallelujah so now if there's sickness and disease in your body I want you to put your hand where you got back trouble, just try to get your hand back out the best you can. You got head trouble, put your hand on your head. You got heart trouble, put your hand on your heart. You got shoulder trouble, put your hand on your shoulder. You got stomach trouble, put your hand on your stomach. And I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank and I praise you that you're the Lord our God who heals us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you told us to call upon you. You told us to preach and heal the sick. Father, I pray for these who are hurting tonight. Some don't even understand what's going on in their body, but Lord, I pray that you touch them with your finger of love and your healing power. Hallelujah to the Christ, our healer. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name for your healing power. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah to the Christ. Your sovereign rule is your will, your bless whom you please. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives this night. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Members of our church, I want you to prepare now to give. It's time to give. And also, this is First Wednesday, so the Lord's Supper will also be administered tonight. You're on the parking lot and those that are home that you've been given the Lord's Supper. I know some folk are taking their crackers and their juice. Uh, that ain't the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine. Some folks say, well, I believe that I could, I could drink some water and it would be it. Uh, well, you believe me wrong. Faith ain't based upon what we think. Faith is based on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you members who are at home on video conference, we want you to prepare now. As pastor comes, we're going to receive the offering, and we're going to go, first of all, let's, let, he's going to do the supper. Amen. Let's do the supper. Hallelujah. The Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. Amen. And then we'll receive a tithe and offering the gifts of love as we leave. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. 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 And when the time came for the feast of the Passover, Jesus' disciples came unto him asking, Master, where should we prepare for the feast of the Passover? He said, Go into the city, and there you meet a man bearing a pitcher of water. He will show you a large upper room or a large room upstairs. There, make ready. And if there that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ instituted the Lord's Supper, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take this bread, which is symbolic of my body, which is to be given for you. And then he takes the cup, and he blesses it, and he tells them to take this cup, which is symbolic of my blood, which is to be shed for you. And the Bible said that Jesus' heart began to be very sorrowful. He began to foretell about how the hand of the one that would betray him was sitting amongst the other disciples. Oh, Lord. And so the question began to be asked amongst the disciples, Lord, is it I, Lord, is it I, Lord, is it I, Lord, is it I? They tell one John, the beloved disciple who was laying on Jesus' breast, which is a place of favor. I think funny and thing like that. Ask Jesus whom it is that will betray him. And Jesus said, it is to whom I give the sop. Yeah. Jesus takes the morsel and he dips it in the sop. And he gives unto Judas Iscariot, which is a sign of favor. And he tells Judas, that that thou do is go and do it quickly. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, Jesus' favorite praying ground. And Jesus prayed a simple prayer. He prayed it three times. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. And nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. And he had already asked the disciples to watch with him while he went up a ways and prayed. And he falls on his face and he prays that same prayer again. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. The Bible said that sweat falls from his brow like great drops of blood, which means that Jesus had... Uh, it, uh, uh, strong, a strong amount of stress and he was under immense pressure and his high blood pressure was acting up at this time. And he comes back and he tells the disciples, can you not watch me one hour while I go young and pray? Mm -hmm. So he goes and prays and prays the same prayer again. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me nevertheless. Not my will, but let your will be done. And he goes back and finds the disciples sleeping and says, let us be up and on our way for the hour of darkness is upon us. And here comes Judas the Roman soldiers and the temple security guards. And Jesus asked them, he said, who do you look for? He said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, I need him. Immediately they fall backwards. And Judas, he greets Jesus with a kiss. For he had made the deal to betray our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver. And he says, the one I kiss, that's the Jesus of Nazareth. And immediately they fell backward when Jesus identifies himself as being the one they're looking for. Peter thinking that Jesus is ready to take his rightful place. Uh, he's ready to take over. He cuts off that ear. And Jesus heals his ear. He puts his hand back there and just heals his ear. And tells Peter, put your sword up. And he who lives by the sword, they will perish by the sword. And Jesus went away to live with him. And the lamb led away to be slaughtered. Which means he went in all innocence as if he did not know what was about to happen. And he was tried on the misdemeanor of impersonating the king. Which means he should have got a fine, maybe some community service at the most, but he was sentenced to death. Yeah. And it was at the time of year, of course, being passed over the tradition of the Jews to let a prisoner, let a prisoner go. They say, do they want, do y'all want Barabbas or do you want this Jesus who says, he should, he say, give us Barabbas, but let this blood of this Jesus be upon us and our children. For they had already persuaded the crowd to say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. 
And they took out with Jesus the Christ. And they whipped him and mocked him all night long. They scoured him. They beat him with a cat of nine pen, which is a whip with bone fragments on the end of it and glass on the ends of it. So when it hits the skin, it rips the skin. But it had to happen because the scripture says, with these stripes we are and were healed. Yeah. He was whipped and beat upon and mocked all night long. And they whipped him up that hill and his body collapsed under the weight of the cross. And they tell one Simon to surrender, brother from North Africa, hey, you come and carry this cross for Jesus the Christ. And he was nailed to the cross. They put rivets in his feet, nails in his hand, and hung him high and dropped him low. And he I died. Know. That's not where the story is. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was placed in a borrowed tomb, and that's still not where the story is. The angel came and rolled the stone away and caused the great earthquake and sat down on the stone. And the ladies came looking to anoint Jesus' body before the sun came up. Said, Who y'all looking for? Say, We see Jesus now. And they're all afraid. They say, Go and meet him. Tell the disciples to go and meet him. For he is alive and risen as he yes, is said. Yes. So the word of the church is always remember that Jesus Christ is alive. Yes, sir. And he did arise with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. Power to save you, power to heal you, power to resurrect you, power to get you up all over again. Yes, sir. So let the prayer to take this communion. Amen. At this time. Amen. Feel back that first layer there. Remember the fellowship. Amen. This bread is symbolic of the blood. I mean, of the body, excuse me. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and with this Christ we are, and we were healed. Our uh, way out of the bread, you may now take the bread. And then feel back this purple layer. This cup is symbolic of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With the, without the sin of Jesus Christ's blood, there is no remission for our sins. Our way out of the cup, you may now take the cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shed blood that still pardons us and saves us and protects us even to this day. Amen. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. 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 We prepare now, amen, to receive the offering. Amen. This amen. time to go receive it. Okay. All right. We, um, amen. Once again, we thank you for viewing us on Facebook on tonight. We appreciate you so very much. Amen. Please share uh, tonight's message. With your Facebook friends, we'll be posting also the YouTube version of it as well for you to view it a little bit more easily to access. Uh, you can go to our website, www.gtclc.org, and the social media platform that we use. On your mobile device. On your mobile device, uh, you can um, click on Facebook or click on the um, YouTube link, and it'll take you to the videos as well. So if it's a message that you want to see that has been going on about the past month, we have all those posted for your viewing. So we love you. And as you go to tell them more about Jesus, tell them about his love. Let them know that Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus heals. and Jesus prospers. Jesus prospers. Amen. We'll see you right early Sunday morning.